Hey everybody, welcome back to the cave. Can you believe it that it has been about eight weeks since Amy and I last sat in here and uh, spent some time with you with Cave Talks. I think the last time we did this, it was July 1st, and I'm recording this right now on uh, September 1st, so two months since uh, we've had a chance to be together uh, in this format. And in those two months, as we've kind of wrapped up summer and moved through summer together, some we've all seen that some strides forward um, have been made. And, that, and that's the good news over the last eight weeks. We've been able to, for the last, I think, three Sundays, um, get together in person and have services um, outdoors at the church and how cool that is that we've been able to make that stride forward um, as a church. And dude, I got to tell you, I have loved seeing your guys' faces, love interacting with you, or at least this much of your face. Uh, love interacting with you. Love uh, sitting and worshiping out loud, out, out loud with other voices. Um, it's been good to be in your presence. So it's been good to see we've been able to move that forward. But the reality is there's also a lot of difficulties that, that have remained. There's still struggles. There's still limitations as to what we're able to do. Um, but God is good. God is still in the midst of all this. God is still in control. I want to take you back to January. All right. I know that January seems a lot, but you know, about 17 years ago. But I want to take you back to January. And in January, what Amy and I had the opportunity to do was uh, lead a group of people through the study called Rooted. And we've talked about Rooted a lot in the past at the church, and we've encouraged um, you guys to take it. It's a great foundational study for really getting rooted in your faith. And we've had a lot of people from Catalyst go through it, probably 150, 175 people from, from Catalyst have gone through Rooted. Well, we had the opportunity, the privilege, really, um, to lead another group of people through Rooted. And one of the experiences um, in the Rooted study is you have what they call the prayer experience. And what the prayer experience is, is it's an opportunity for your group to gather together one night in somebody's home. And then once you get there, you, you scatter and find your own quiet space um, outdoors or somewhere throughout the, the person's home for the purpose of having 60 minutes, one entire hour alone with you and God to talk to him, to listen to him, to read scripture about him. And one of the resources they give us when we go through the prayer experience, that one hour alone with God, is a list of God's characteristics, a list of, of God's qualities. And this last January, when I was going through the prayer experience, for, uh, for whatever reason, the word that really jumped out at me, the characteristic, the quality of God that really resonated with me, and I felt like, man, I feel like God is saying, this is, this is, this is who I am for you this year, Jason. This is, this is the quality that I want you to really recognize this year. It was the quality of God is our guide. God is our guide. And it says in the book of Psalms, chapter 48, you got this great passage, you got this great chapter in Psalm 48, where the writer of it, David, um, spends many, many verses kind of detailing all the great, powerful, sovereign, amazing things that God has done for the nation of Israel, the way that God has provided for them, he has rescued them, he has protected them. And at the very end of Psalm 48, David says this, hey, listen, this God, meaning the God of all the previous verses leading up to the end of chapter 48, he says, listen, this God that I have just described, this God is our guide until the very end. Man, little did I know back in January, right, that we were going to need to lean on God as our guide to the depths that we've had to since March. I had no idea that, that we were going to need to lean on God to guide us as a church through the season that we found ourselves in. I had no idea that God was going to need to guide us to the depths that he has and the level that he has to guide my family and your families through the things we've experienced over the last several months. So that concept of God being our guide has really resonated with me this year, and I've really held tight to this tonight this year. The other verse that I think is so cool Related to God being our guide is this. It says in uh, Psalm 119, verse 105, it says that his word is a lamp unto our feet. And what that means is God's word to us illuminates uh, the path that we and the steps that we need to take in our life. That God's word gives us direction. So we have in scripture this definition that God is our guide and the words that he speaks to us are a lamp unto our path. His words are direction for us. Now think about that, okay? What good is a guide, what good is a lamp 
if they are ignored? What good is a guide or what good is a lamp if we venture out into the darkness and the unknown alone? How many of you have ever gone on a tour, whether it's a, a museum or maybe you've done a river raft and you've got a river guide? Those people have gone before and they have insight and knowledge and understanding to offer to maximize our experience and to protect us oftentimes, right? In other words, think about this. What good are those IKEA instructions that come with your furniture if you don't bother to look at them? How many of you guys, how many of you have, have, have assembled IKEA furniture and have experienced the frustration of it? But thankfully, the instructions that come with that IKEA furniture, the instructions lessen a little bit the frustration of putting that furniture together. And if I didn't have those instructions, I wouldn't have a clue how to put together the Bjorn, you know, bookcase or, you know, all these, all these uh, Swedish name products that we've put together, right? If we discard the instructions, if we discard the, the guide, we're lost. And it's with that in mind that I am inviting you on a journey this fall. It's with that in mind that I'm inviting you to spend a focused season of your life reading the Bible, reading the written words of the guide, and then talk about it in the context of a group. See, in the past, what we've done is this, and it's been super successful. In the past, what we've done is we've had sermon-based e-groups where you get together, you listen to the sermon either live on Sunday or you listened to our podcast back in the day, and you'd get together once a week with a bunch of people and you would talk about the sermon. You would talk about and have conversations about what you heard one of the pastors teaching on Sunday morning. And those experiences have been great and they have produced fruit and there has been relational connection and, and uh, really meaningful connection points happen in our C groups over the last several years that we've done it this way. It's been fantastic. But see, my conviction for our church this fall is to move away from conversations about what we as pastors have taught you to what God is teaching you as you read his word. See, reading and knowing God's word is, is, is a foundational and non-negotiable spiritual discipline that we need to pursue in our lives, that we need to take ownership of in our lives, that we need to take initiative in our own lives to pursue knowing God through his word. I love what it says in 2 Timothy 3.16. Listen to this. All scripture, not some, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us what, uh, what teaches us to do what is right. And I, I need more of that in my life. I need more of God's guidance in my life. I, I need God's word to lighten the path that I'm supposed to take in life. I need more of that in my life, and I would wager that you do too. We need to know God's word. And that's the why behind some of these little shifts that I'm going to talk about for groups this fall. We need to know God's word. The how, the how it looks is this. Read your Bible. Okay? Read your Bible. To give some direction to this, what I've done is, is I have created a reading plan that's going to take us all through the book of Luke. It's going to take us all through the book of Acts. And what you're going to do, what we're all going to do, is we're going to want to read one chapter a day from September 21st through December 1st. And you'll have the weekends off. So Monday through Friday, five days a week, you're going to be reading one chapter from Luke and one chapter uh, from the book of Acts, like I said, from September 21st to December 1st. So you're going to read the Bible. Next, you're going to join or you're going to start a 10-person group to have conversations about what you're reading. All right? You're going to talk about it. You're going to have conversations about it. You're going to interact with what other people read and what other people thought. Okay? And to do that, you're going to read, you're going to join a group, and while you're reading, you're going to journal. Something that I'm so poor at, but something I've tried to implement in my life, and, and I'm hoping this, this fall it's going to really kind of up my journaling game. But journal what you read. And here's the cool thing. For the first 100 people, 
pay attention for the first hundred people that register, which I'll explain in a minute. First hundred people that register for groups this fall, they're gonna get your own custom journal for your uh, for your writing of, of your thoughts. So what you do is this, you write questions, you write comments, you write your ideas, you write your thoughts, you write what challenges you, challenges you, you write your observations, you write what your action steps are based upon what you read in that one chapter from Luke or that one chapter from Acts. And then you share with others those things that you've written down as they share with you the thoughts and questions and action steps that they've written down. Because here's the deal, we have much to learn from one another. I'll tell you this, there's been countless times in my life where I'm sitting in a group of people and we read the identical passage of scripture and we all get something slightly different out of it that we can learn from one another about. I've got my insights, I've got my views, I've got my thoughts into what God is telling me as I read it. Amy has those exact same thoughts and ideas and, and, and insights that she gains, but they're personal to her. And then we get together and we share those and the, the fullness of that passage just grows as we get to hear not only and share our thoughts, but we get to hear what other people think about that exact same passage of scripture. So we have so much to learn from one another. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find nine other people to sit with once a week, in person or online, your choice, okay? So you're gonna find or create a group of 10 people to sit down and have these conversations. And I'm serious about 10, okay? This number 10 is really important, not because it's a COVID thing, but because it's a conversation thing, all right? Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, our bullseye on the target is this, that every time a group gets together, every time a group gets together, every person has a chance to share something and that opportunity grows um, the less, the less people are in the group. You know what I mean? Like, It's a lot easier for every person to have a chance to share something when there's not 20 people competing to share versus 10 people in the room talking together. Okay, so the how, read your Bible, journal, and get in a group where you can have a conversation with other people. All right, so how does that happen? How do, you, how do these group things happen? One is, well, you can create your own group of 10. Create your own group of 10. Maybe you should start from scratch. Maybe you've been in a group and you're like, it's time for me to branch out. It's time for me to maybe meet some new people. Create your own group of 10 and get creative with it. Listen, you can have a group of 10 men. You can have a group of 10 women. You could get two families together. Maybe you got another family that you would like to sit down and they got kids that are the same age as your kids and you can sit down and you can use this reading plan as a family and they get together a couple of families to have conversations about, about what you're learning. So create a group or listen, do this. Join an existing group, all right? Join an existing group. On Monday, September 6th, all the different group options will go live for you to choose from on the Catalyst Church Center app. So what you need to do is you gotta download the app. So starting on Monday, September 6th, you can scroll through all the different options for our groups. And let me tell you this, if you're looking through them and you're like, man, I don't know who these people are, but I really wanna get into a group, do this, do this. Text Catalyst SP to 97,000, that's Catalyst SP to 97,000. You will get a link sent to you uh, for an online connect card. And on that connect card, I want you to do one of two things. One is, I want you to check the box, I wanna join a group. If you check that box saying that you wanna join a group, uh, myself or Larissa, our administra administrative assistant, will give you a call and help you find a group that's gonna work for you. The other thing you can do, if you text Catalyst SP to 97000 and you get the link to the connect card is you can check, I wanna start a group, I wanna lead a group, all right? If you check, I wanna lead a group, I will contact you personally and talk through what that looks like so that I can make sure that you are prepped and fully ready to take on that responsibility of leading a group, okay? So create your own group of 10, join an existing group, or if you don't know what to do, if you don't know what to do, text Catalyst SP 97000 that you want to join a group or you want to lead a group and you will be personally contacted about how we can make that happen for you. That's the how. The when. All right. We looked at the why. We need to know God's word. We looked at the how. Get into a group. The when is this from September 6 through September 20. That is your opportunity to do one thing. And that one thing is pray. I'm asking you to pray between September 6 and September 20 about your involvement. Because listen, if you've not yet joined a group, um, the relational connection that happens in a group and the growth that happens in groups is your next 
best step. So from September 6th through September 20th, I want you to pray about your involvement. I want you to ask God if now's the time for you to take that brave step of joining a group if you've never, uh, if you've never done that before. Is he nudging you to get in a group with others? The other thing I want you to pray about is this. If you've been in a group, maybe what God is telling you for this season is it's time for you to step up. Maybe you've been sitting in a group and you've been enjoying it and you've been learning and you've been doing that for years now. Maybe what you need to do now is you need to step up and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to create a group of 10 people. I've sat in groups. I've benefited from groups. I know what groups are about. I understand the value of them. I think I'm ready to get a group of 10 people together. So from September 6th to September 20th, I want you to pray. And then as God leads you, I want you to go on our app and I want you to choose a group or again, text us. Let us know if you want to start a group or if you need help joining a group. The win. All the groups are going to kick off the week of September 21st and run through December 1st. Now, that is, a, um, that is an 11-week span, okay, with 10 gatherings. And what I mean by that is you're not going to meet the week of Thanksgiving. So from September 21st through December 1st, you will have 10 gatherings where you just talk about what God's teaching you. And you have conversations about it. And you allow God to speak into your life. Here's the win, not the W-H-E-N like we just talked about, but the W-I-N, here's the win. Guys, the Bible is a divine revelation, okay? The Bible is God's own word to us. It reveals who God is, it reveals who we are, and it reveals why we're here. So the win is this, scripture, as we study it and read it, scripture reveals how to deepen our relationship with God and deepen our relationship with others. As we take ownership of reading God's word, we will gain a deeper understanding and a relational connection to him, and we will gain a deeper understanding of, of our place in this world and how to interact with people around us. Listen, it's a simple plan, but I think it's gonna have profound impact. Read, <laughs> write, and respond in the context of a group of what God's teaching you. It's about initiative, it's about ownership of the spiritual discipline of reading God's word. And to make the experience of reading scripture um, and reading your Bible more effective, maybe for some of you it's not a, a, um, a habit, a spiritual discipline in your life. So to make the experience of reading your Bible more effective, I'm gonna be hosting an online class on Sunday night, September 13th, um, that you can register for on our, register for on our app. And it's gonna help all of us learn how to meaningfully read and study and digest and apply what we're reading from scripture. So if the concept of, of just kind of taking your own ownership and your own initiative of reading scripture and reading that one chapter a day seems new to you, sign up for this class and registration for that is also gonna begin on September 6th, like all group registrations will. You can register on the app for that. And uh, like I said, it's gonna be Sunday night, September 13th, and I'm just gonna walk you through what does it mean to study scripture? What does it mean to read scripture? What does it mean to have a quiet time? You may have heard that word growing up in the church, how to have your quiet time. So questions, comments, thoughts, um, figuring out next steps. If you, if you need any help making this happen in your life, here's all I want you to do. Email me at the email address you see on the screen or feel free to give me a call at the phone number on the screen. I, I'm a guy that cares deeply about um, people's growth and relationship with God and as, as you know, all the staff here at Catalyst is. And I wanna be able to have those conversations to help make that happen for you. So, when, from September 6th through September 20th, that's when you can start praying about your involvement, whether it is uh, joining an existing group or creating a 10-person group of your own. The how is do that um, on our Church Center Catalyst app or text us, Catalyst, uh, text Catalyst SP at 97000 so you can get the form to let us know you want to join a group or if you want to lead a group, and we will walk you through that process. And then starting Monday, September 21st, that is the first week that our groups will begin their 11-week journey of reading scripture every day, reading, writing, and responding. And I know, like I said, it's a simple plan, but I think as we're united in doing this and take ownership and initiative, I think God's gonna do and reveal some really cool things in our lives. Let me know how I can help make that happen in your life. Hey, Amy was able to uh, squeeze me in after uh, work at the preschool today. So glad to have you back on the couch for Cave Talks, just like old times. 
Uh, <laughs> <Old> <laughs> uh, so eight weeks have passed since yes. we did this, and I was talking a little bit about that and some things that have maybe changed around here a little bit or some cool things we've seen be able to progress and move forward, church, preschool's open. Any, any thoughts on what the eight week, last eight weeks have looked like since we've had a chance to do this? Yeah, well, we've been back at work. We went back. We started August 12th, but we went back the beginning of August. It's good. I was I was uh, kind of stressed out about all the guidelines and stuff, but it's going well. Cool. Seems pretty simple. Sweet. You got a win, a win from the last eight weeks, or a win from the school starting, or a win from hanging you know out with what? Um, I think a win for us is being able, honestly, just to be able to see kids interact with other kids. Um, I feel like we carry the, you know, you carry the burden of this whole thing and like we're, you know, breaking up our playground and doing all these guidelines, but the kids don't know it. They get to just come and be together and play and not worry about all that. So I think that's a win. Cool. And it's a yeah. win that we opened. I yeah. feel that's a win. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. It's by the grace of God you go. Yeah, open your super door, excited. So cool. It's been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a win. Being able to be around people. Uh, that, that's yeah. a win. Yeah. You know, church, and, going back to church. And I would say, like like I said, this this whole time sitting with you is like a great next step for you is to get relationally connected. You know, like Amy said, for those kids, a win is being mm -hmm. relationally connected. For you, it's the same thing, being relationally connected. I really, like I said, I really want you to, to pray about what that next step looks like for you for connection um, with a group. Either you want to do it in, in person, you want to do it online. Who are the nine other people that you want to do life with for the next season as we really uh, make a concerted, focused effort to spend time being fed by God's Word and hearing mm -hmm. what His plan is for our life and learning about who He is through Scripture reading. So, yeah, being together is a win. So, I hope you can experience that. All right, so that's it. Remember, September 6th, registration's open for groups. Be praying about what that looks like for you. And You didn't uh, say September 10th was your birthday? Oh, I didn't you have miss, to. You were going to miss that opportunity? September 10th was my birthday. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't believe that. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, we love you guys. Take care. Take a next step. Get connected in a group. Bye. Bye.